I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know, right, what they have done. They know. They fear that there is no other way to be human, but the way in which they are human, which is to, so, you know, like you talk to white people and whenever you, you really want to have a reckoning about it, they say stuff like, you know, it's just human nature. If y'all had all of this power, you would have done the same thing, right? And it's like, no, that's what white humans did. White human beings thought there's a world here and we own it prior to them. Black and brown people have been sailing across oceans, interacting with each other for centuries without total subjugation, domination, and colonialism, right? Make sure you guys leave some messages in the comment section. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you always know when we have brand new content and you won't miss a thing. This is Random Things You Need to Know. I am your host, Racism. I was on an episode before. Lorenzo invited me back, so I'm back. Uh, if you guys are at BitChute watching, thanks for coming back. If you're at Odyssey watching, thanks for coming back. If you're at YouTube watching, thanks for coming back. Wow, we have the chance to present you these. Hmm. You know, this woman who we're going to showcase in this episode, I know her from somewhere. I just can't remember where. I know her. It's got to come to me. And just, you just hope. Let me tell you what happened. This lady. Now, I need for you all. I want to say this. While we only have a couple minutes in. I want to say this. I need for you all to watch the entire thing. I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm going to chop it up as much as I can. But I need for you to hear everything that she says. All right. This happened. Check this out. And I would ask white folks to kind of begin there. But... The real sort of issue here, and I, you know, I've heard people sort of say it, is one, I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know, right, what they have done. They know. They fear that there is no other way to be human but the way in which they are human, which is to, so, you know, like you talk to white people and whenever you, you really want to have a reckoning about it, they say stuff like, you know, it's just human nature. If y'all had all of this power, you would have done the same thing, right? And it's like, no, that's what white humans did. White human beings thought there's a world here and we own it. Prior to them, black and brown people have been sailing across oceans, interacting with each other for centuries without total subjugation, domination, and colonialism, right? Um, and, and, and that's important to say. And so they do this thing where they say like how white people have done humanity, how they have acted as human beings is the way all of us act. So they think black people are going to get them back. And I wouldn't be mad at the black people who want to get them back. I, but what I, what I believe about black people is that we have seen, uh, what a, what a shit show this iteration of, treatment of, of other human beings means and that my hope is that we would do it differently you know in the moments when we have some power we will not do it perfectly but i do think that all of us can sort of agree that a politics that says like there are superior and inferior human beings just isn't the way to go what the fuck are you talking about and that's the thing that white people don't trust us to do because they are so corrupt you know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power that they can't let, you know, they fear viscerally, existentially letting go of power because they cannot imagine that there's another way to be. It is either that you dominate or you are dominated. And isn't it sad that that, that is spiritually who they are and that they can't imagine a sort of more expansive notion of the world? If you think about that, right? then what are the options, right? So on one side is they come around to the majority of human beings on the planet's way of thinking and say, hey, there is another way to think about power and the sharing of it and the way we exist in the world and relate to each other. But that all automatically means you got to give up some of the shit you got, right? Like it just, like that's, part of it like you can't hoard and be a kind of a rational giving human being on the planet like no other societies in the world kind of work like that so they're gonna have to give some shit up and again if 
the basis of white thinking is that hoarding of power in that that is essentially how they define humanity and, and the human existence, then they will have to give something up. Or they say, fuck that, and we're going to keep all of this because if I got to give it up, then I might as well resort to whiteness and try to hold on to this little corner of whatever we have for as long as we can get. So if you look at those two diametrically, you know, those two choices, how, like, what should we expect, right? Like, because, because I mean, uh, the other uh, only other alternative is a, a radical change of consciousness. Look, I mean, first of all, what kind of question is that? Because you, because there is no answer that is sufficient. Like, the thing I want to say to you is, we got to take these motherfuckers out. But I know, but like, we can't say that, right? We can't say like, I don't believe in a project of violence. I truly don't, because I think in the end that our souls suffer from that, and I do think that some of this is a spiritual condition. So here is where I land most days about white people, um, and I actually have been helped in this by thinking about indigenous people, right? See, part of the challenge of, around whiteness is that it. It totally skews our view of everything, right? I gave this like TED talk about this some years back. And one of the reasons I was trying to think about it is like the the world didn't start when white people arrived in America and tried to tell all the rest of us how things were going to go. There were people out here making worlds, Africans and indigenous people being brilliant and, you know, libraries and inventions and, you know, vibrant notions of humanity and cross-cultural exchange long before white people showed up being raggedy and violent and terrible and trying to take everything from everybody. And that's really important because if we believe that history starts for us when white people drag us to these shores, then we can never get outside of the notion that this is going to be our existential struggle. What the hell are you talking about? There is a world beyond even our sojourn on the earth. And so whiteness is going to have an end date because it it is not, despite what white people think of themselves, they do not defy the laws of eternity, right? Their projects are not so sophisticated that the natural laws of physics change for them. And when we sort of humble them in the, in humble our own understandings of whiteness, it seems like the biggest giant that we face. But in the end, right, it is what I like to say is, you know, black folks were out here for centuries and centuries and millennia doing all kinds of wonderful things and probably some fucked up things too. But whiteness is largely an, inco you know, an inconvenient interruption. And so we then get to ask ourselves, so why am I here in this moment of it? Like, damn, you know, why did I show up in this particular iteration? And it's like, well, I think we showed up in this iteration precisely so that we could. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about, man? How do we, is there a way, look, I don't, I don't want to put, the weight of the world on your shoulders to say, hey, solve racism. <laughs> but how do yeah. we yeah. move from that backlash to allow them to understand? Because they're always, as you said, they're, plan they're good at planning. And so they're always kind of like 10 steps ahead in what they're going to demonize it. They're demonizing it before we even get to, you know, the chance to teach it or the chance to push people towards this truth? I mean, I think a couple of things about it. One is, you know, I'm thinking about the fact that our kids are always living in a racialized context. So I'm like, you know, as a fourth grader, I was looking around going, why ain't no other white, why ain't no black kids in this honors class, but me and like a handful of kids, right? Our kids are making racial assessments. White kids are making racial assessments about their own superiority or who's better than or their own entitlement. Black kids are also doing that. Brown kids are doing that. We are all trying to figure out why the world looks the way it does, who is, you know, who is getting opportunities and who is not. We are wired in that way, I think fundamentally. And so I'm like, our students, our kids, they do have an understanding because they are critical thinkers about the, the kind of racial situations and the racial setup that we have. And I think we need to be honest about that, that essentially what what white folks are trying to do is unbeat the drum, right? To, to act as though 
like we don't come here already sort of working this thing out and trying to figure it out. You know, white supremacy is the most ridiculous theory of race that ever existed to begin with. And that's really all that a critical theory of race suggests is that that's the thing. White supremacy is not history. It's not fact. It's not what actually is true. White people are not supreme. They are not superior. They are not better. And as we said, they are not original. But what they did was they you, they just created a theory about how they thought the world worked. And then they literally browbeat, enslaved, chained, shot, killed, drowned raped, you know, and, and essentially subjugated a whole planet to make their theory true. That is, and that is the thing that they are learning. They ain't mad because critical race theory is untrue. They mad because it's true. They're mad because it, it exposes with stunning clarity and sort of clear, like uh, incisive clarity as well. Just how ridiculous and absurd the idea that people who arrived on the planet millennia after black and brown folk had already been here, that they are the superior one. It's completely absurd. A New Jersey professor said that we got to take white people out during a discussion on the national backlash on critical race theory. Brittany Cooper, 41, a professor at Rutgers University, made the shocking comment during an online discussion with The Roots' Michael Harriet, titled Unpacking the Attacks on Critical Race, Race Theory on September 21st. She said the accurate portrayal of history was the white people didn't discover America because there were already indigenous people and that they had committed acts of violence in order to make themselves seem superior. Cooper added, it is not that white people don't know what they have done, presumably referencing slavery. They fear that there is no other way to be human than the way in which they are human. Noting that whatever she speaks, whenever she speaks to a white person, they write off all of this power as merely a part of human nature. During Cooper's response, Harriet was seen nodding his head in agreement before asking the Rutgers professor what she thinks the options are. He provided the options as they presumably lumping all white people together, coming around to the majority of human beings on the planet's way of thinking, or they say fuck that because they don't want to relinquish said power. Cooper candidly responded, the thing I want to say is you gotta take these motherfuckers out. But like, I can't say that before noting that she doesn't believe in violence. And the project of violence. Cooper, for many people who don't know, a professor at Rutgers University, also has a website uh, that is called the Crunk Feminist Collective, where it is feminism for black women so that they can be, I don't know, I guess homosexual, radical women who hate men. I, I, I don't know. Um, as you see, this woman hates white people. I'm pretty sure she doesn't like men either. I'm pretty sure she's not married. She doesn't look like a woman who is married. Eh, maybe she is. I don't know. Maybe she found some beta cuck to be married to. But either way, I ask the question, why is this okay? Why is it that it's okay for this woman to say these things and there is no backlash? There is nothing anybody can say. Um, in, this, in this argument, as you all saw earlier, she carved out a time segment to discuss white people having children. She said white people's birth rates are going down because they literally cannot afford to put newer generations into the middle class. The other thing that I think, which is super interesting and to your point, no, they're not going to give it up, but whiteness is killing white folks, right? It's Jonathan Messel's book, Dying of Whiteness, right? For all of the imperial machinations in this country and abroad, their numbers are shrinking. They have so priced themselves out of the market, like that they can't even like, so, you know, this, like here's one of the cruel ironies of whiteness. I think I think about this a lot. You know, when we talk about gentrification all the time, you know, all my friends that are from Brooklyn are like, you know, they just kept going further on the train and then pricing us out. But the thing that's interesting is white people have become so expensive that they can't even afford themselves, right? They actually elevate the prices in neighborhoods so much that now their, their lives have so much more economic value that is not like at a level of pair. Look, I'm trying to say that to the extent that black life is undervalued, we might have to like entertain the notion like a all lives are priceless in value but b that if we think economically and structurally white lives actually 
are structurally overvalued to the extent that they undervalue other groups of people. And part of what that means economically is that they explode property value so much when they move in that they can't afford it, which is why they're not having no kids. Because they can't actually, so white people's birth rates are going down. They're the only group whose birth rates are going down in the country because they literally cannot afford to put new, their children, newer generations into the middle class. And so they keep on delaying birth rate. And that is a world in which economically they, we literally live in a system where even white people cannot sustain the cost of their own lives, right? And by that, I mean the elevated cost of their own lives. It's super perverse. And also they kind of deserve it, right? Um, and so they're losing. That's why their birth rates are going down. That's why demographics are shifting. And so even though they are hitting us with everything they have, we are catching hell and it does, and you know, and we are living through this like white supremacist vortex that literally is the stuff of the horror shows that I write about when I'm reading about the 19th century. Even though we living through that, we're living through it because it's the last gasp of a dying, you know, it's the death rattle of a sort of dying way of being. And that's super hard to hear. But I'm like, just look at the numbers. White life expectancy has gone down for the first time in the last couple of years in a hundred years. How is it that they won the 20th century? They dominate everything. They got, you know, more money than God. They kind of deserve it is what she said. And now, I, you know, I, I asked the question, if, if a white person said this about a black person, it would be racist. So how is this not racist? Why is this not an example of racism? I mean, people would say, well, it's reverse racism. Reverse racism would be no racism. But well, this obviously must be another race having an issue with another race and exhibiting hatred towards that race by saying we need to get rid of them. It's great that their birth rate is declining. And of course, blaming every issue in history on that race without really examining history for what it is, the actual facts of history, not the feelings of a foolish, crunk feminist. What is her uh, infatuation with white people that she just can't let go of, that she needs to involve them in everything? She needs to blame them for everything. You know, the first part, any psychiatrist will tell you, the first part of getting your of getting yourself together and overcoming whatever issues you have is, is, is discovering what you've done wrong, the things that you have made wrong. I believe that if you look at what she's saying, and if she actually took time out to see that, she would see that some of the things that she's saying is really part of the problem in the black community. It's been many, many years of women saying things like this, which has led to blacks believing this nonsense. Do you think this woman is making progress for the black people? Do you think that she is a beacon of light and an example of what we all should be as African Americans? I don't. And I honestly think that many black women feel this way and they share, they espouse this theory onto the rest of African American uh, students in school and their youth in their homes because they grow up without black men and these black men grow up to be beta boys who believe that everything is the white man's problem and not by any design of their own leadership or anything that they can change anyway why is Rutgers okay with this why is it that Rutgers has not fired this woman? Why is it that Rutgers has allowed her to stay at this job? Why is it that none of the students at Rutgers are protesting her? I haven't heard anyone say anything about her, but I find it very interesting. Let me give you an example of how a black man can be demonized no matter what. Uh, there was the story of the African-American lawyer who was at Harvard. He was the law professor. You know what? I did an episode on it. Why don't we just Go ahead, Lorenzo. Why don't you go ahead and just cue that up? All right, I want to start with this dispute on Harvard's campus. There is a law professor there who has been well uh, esteemed, well loved, uh, and tonight he's in trouble apparently because of a client he's decided to represent. He's joined the legal team of Harvey Weinstein, and there are a number of students who have started petitions to get rid of him now. They said, do you really want to one day accept your diploma from someone who, for whatever reason, professional or personal, believes it's okay to defend such a prominent figure at the center of the Me Too movement? The developments of Dean Sullivan's professional work are not only upsetting, but deeply trauma-inducing. Um, Jessica, they say they, they don't want him to take certain clients. 
Well, this guy, uh, this dean actually represented Aaron Hernandez before he represented Harvey Weinstein. And last time I checked, criminal defense attorneys defend criminals. Now, I think you can have a conversation about the type of clients that he's taking on, and it sounds like he is open to that conversation. But when you say trauma-inducing and the person that you're discussing has not been credibly accused of sexual assault themselves, it seems a little ridiculous, especially for graduate students and if some of these are law students themselves who don't seem to really understand what it is that you go to law school for in the first place. Uh, was asked to step down by the Harvey, by the Harvard. Actually, he was made to step down because he represented Harvey Weinstein. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. He stepped down from the Harvey Weinstein case not too long ago, and he was no longer rep representing Harvey Weinstein. He was done. He was done with that whole thing. And they asked, they told him he had to leave. Now, he, he can't be the dean anymore of the Winthrop House, uh, which is whack. Some people were saying that it was about race. I don't think this is about race. I think this is about liberals being upset with Harvey Weinstein. So, being, so now anyone attached to Harvey Weinstein gets punished, even a lawyer. Wait, Harvey Weinstein can't have a lawyer? I think it's crazy that there's no black groups, no NAACP, no Black Lives Matter coming about this saying, hey man, this black man is job. He was doing good things. He was doing good things according to what people were saying. He was he was doing good things. He was a great teacher. I hope that Rutgers does some disciplinary action. However, I know they won't. How uneducated are these two simpletons sitting there nodding their heads in agreement mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to all of the nonsense that they're saying? Everything is the white man's fault. The white man is just so evil. He utilizes his evil to take over different things. Even though, one thing that I've always said, I said this to some people the other day, I said it's very interesting how the white man is the one who's evil, yet it is the black man who needs to be in the white man's shit. His stores, his businesses, in his parades, in his movies. He even needs, he even needs the white man to acknowledge him in positivity for all of the things, all the movies and music that he makes for his own black people, the white man needs to acknowledge that, yet the white man is the one who is so evil and who we need to get rid of. It'll be very, very curious to know when the white man is all gone, who will the black man blame for all his problems? Who will he then look to to get all of his um, acclaim and who will he look to to get veneration from? Because he certainly doesn't care about getting it from his own black people. You know, I asked this in some previous episodes. What, what's going on, white people? Do you all hate yourselves? Are you all hearing this information? Are you so overridden with guilt over, over slavery and Jim Crow that you feel as though you need to be struck, struck in with this kind of a burden? That you need to hear this on a daily basis about how evil you are and how evil your race is and your ancestors? You may come from people who didn't even believe in racism. You may come from German ancestry who did not even have, ra uh, have slaves. But you are still a racist. How long are you all going to allow this? More importantly, how long until the KKK comes back? As I said before, the KKK's whole purpose was basically they were a gang for downtrodden whites. Well, whites seem to be getting trampled on every day, and it's allowed by the Negroes, by other people as well, by other races as well, the Mexicans and Asians now, they're all joining in to attack the white man. How long will this last? And what will happen when the KKK returns? And then African Americans can then say what? Oh, we see they back, they've always been here, they never left. I don't know if you all really see this, but the KKK is very old, they're, but they're not doing anything. But you can make a resurgence of the KKK with new, younger, more radical individuals in the group with stuff like this. And if this woman does not lose her job, if she is allowed to have, make, let this happen and nothing is it going to happen, why should white people allow this? If a white woman, a white woman recently said something about blacks getting grades at Georgetown and she made statements about how they need to work hard to get grades, she was let go. Now imagine being a black student at one of the most prestigious law schools in this country and have to hear your professor say that about you. That is what those students heard. That professor now has been fired, but has highlighted a problem long talked about at some of the most prestigious law schools in this country. Listen to the offensive remarks about black students that got Georgetown law professor Sandra Sellers fired. And you know what? I hate to say this. I end up having this, you know, angst every semester that a lot of my lower ones are blacks. 
happens almost every semester. The video call was between Sellers, who has taught at the school for nearly 20 years, and Professor David Batson, another Georgetown law professor. Part of the recording was posted online. In the clip, Sellers claims her black students routinely grade lower than her other students. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know. It's some really good ones, but there are also usually some that are just plain at the bottom. It drives me crazy. Georgetown terminated Sellers and placed Batson on administrative leave while the school's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Affirmative Action investigates, saying Batson has been removed from any involvement he has in the course he was discussing with Sellers. The university also says it's taking significant steps to ensure that all students in this class are fairly graded without the input of either professors. The dean called the conversation reprehensible and abhorrent, adding that the termination and investigation is by no means the end of our work to address the many structural issues of racism reflected in this painful incident, and that there's a need for more comprehensive anti-bias training. But this woman at Rutgers is going to be able to say all of this hateful rhetoric about white people, and that's okay? Hmm. Great, fantastic. So the props are obviously, Lorenzo's an idiot, I know nothing, this woman knows it all, and in the course of this episode, I figured out where I know her from. I figured it out, everybody. Do you guys remember this? The racism that you're experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet don't work for you the same. Black women, when we do the same diets as white women, we lose less weight and we lose it slower. The racism that you're experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet don't work for you the same. Moving, we're taking care of kids, but our food quality suffers. And look, those policies kill our people. You can't get access to good health care, good insurance. The racism that you're experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet don't work for you the same. Yeah. Diets are racist, everyone. You know, the diets that work for white women don't work for black women because they're racially designed to only help white women become thinner and not black women even though there is a cultural trend to be thicker in society, to be more zoftic, to be more curvier. But I know it's the racist diets. You guys leave some comments in the comment section. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think Brittany Cooper is correct, Lorenzo? She is such a scholar. She's awesome. I don't know why you're saying these things about her or black women. Black women are leading the surge in the right way, in the direction of progress for black people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or do you feel like me? Uh, this is stupid. Uh, Brittany Cooper is an idiot. Brittany Cooper is a weak fucking specimen of a person. Whether she was white, black, or Indian, Asian, trans, whatever, she'd still be weak. You know why? Because that woman has some real problems, and she hasn't addressed them. She's basically blamed them all on white folks. Ain't nobody got time for that kind of weak ass coping. Get the fuck out of here. You don't represent my race, and you don't represent me. You represent some new form of niggadom that I will not support. So, nigga, take your nigga ass on, and black folks, let's continue to be black and progress ahead of these motherfuckers. I'll see you in the next one. And it's some shit you needed to know, because that bitch is dumb. Random Radio. Yeah, boy!